Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and welcome to this video explaining why the thrust indications on the A350 are different from what you are used to from your conventional aircraft. You will have noticed that the A350 comes with a thrust gauge at the very top compared to the typical N1 or EPR gauges that you find on other aircraft. In today's video we want to explain why and why the thrust gauge may actually be a better option and what's different to the typical N1 values that you know from your other aircraft. In order to understand this topic we first of all have to understand what our basic N1 and EPR indications are. Now N1 is a fictional number that an airplane manufacturer comes up with when they design the engine and we can roughly say that N1 is proportional to the RPMs of the engine, so to the revolutions per minute or in the easy form how fast the engine is rotating. Now typical values are an idle N1 approximately at 20% and then you go up to somewhere between 90 to 110% for your takeoff thrust setting. The problem with this is that the N1 percentage is not linear to the thrust produced by the engine. So at the very low power settings you achieve small changes, we can see this in a couple of moments, and at the very high power settings you are producing very large changes. For example on the CFM56 engine on the Boeing 737 and A320 in the high power ranges, so talking 80% upwards, around 4% change N in N1 already is a thrust change of approximately 10%. So this is something that pilots have gotten used to over the years, but something that does catch him out every now and then. For instance when setting technical thrust or when setting taxi thrust settings, where it may look like you're only adding a couple percent N1, but you're in fact producing a very large change in thrust. Now, one of the problems with the N1 reading is that N1 only describes the revolutions per minute, but depending on the maintenance status of the aircraft, those revolutions per minute may or may not produce the same amount of change in thrust. An engine that's been worn down, that already saw a couple of bird strikes, a couple of maintenance actions, fixing those, will not produce the same amount of thrust as a brand new engine at the same N1 percentage. Therefore, engine manufacturers have come up with a different indication, and that is the EPR. Now, EPR is the engine pressure ratio. Basically, it's the ratio between the pressure at the exhaust of the engine versus the pressure in the inlet of the engine. So if you have an EPR of 1.0, then your engine is neither producing thrust nor drag. If you have an EPR that is greater than 1, then your engine is producing a forward momentum. And this is independent of the maintenance state of the aircraft, as the EPR is based on the pressure that's measured in the inlet and the outlet of the engine. Therefore, if you have two engines on the same aircraft that do not have exactly the same status, which is the case on basically all aircraft, then you will notice that in order to produce the same EPR, you will get different N1 readouts from those engines. The problem with EPR, however, is that an engine at takeoff thrust is going to produce somewhere between 1.4 to 1.6 EPR, and typical approach thrust settings and taxi settings are so small in the variations that you need in order to precisely control the aircraft that pilots adopted a way of still reading the N1 gauges on those EPR driven aircraft. For example, the EPR setting on the Rolls Royce engines on the Airbus A330 are values that, yeah, you do know, but you don't fly by them. You just set 46% N1, that's your approach thrust setting, that works great. And that, of course, is a little bit of a problem, because in those engines, you have that large gauge for your EPR readout, but pilots aren't using it. Instead, they're just using the small number below. And therefore, a solution had to be found, and this is where the thrust setting that we see on the A350, the A380, and by the way also on the Boeing 787, depending on the engine version installed, comes into play. 
Now, EPR was the attempt of the engine manufacturer to show you the actual thrust output from the aircraft. But why not just take the good out of both and use the thrust percentage? While giving it a little bit clearer indications like, pilot, like what pilots appreciated on the N1 readout. And this is basically what Airbus, or respectively what the engine manufacturers, came up with for the latest generation of engines. And this is what we see on the Airbus A350. So we can see that our idle and or our idle thrust is 4.2%. Now let's have a look at the relationship between the thrust output and the engine N1 to show you what kind of difference these changes actually make. So we know that typical thrust settings on the Airbus A350 for taxi are about 30% N1 and no more than 40%. So let's have a look at what that means to the thrust readout that we have at the top over here. I'm going to increase our thrust slightly now. Have a look at the thrust number and compare that to your N1 readout. You can see that in order to achieve some 30% N1 we have to increase our thrust to around 14%-ish, 13-14%. Now if we increase our thrust further to 40% N1 you will notice that the change already becomes non-linear. So now we're looking at about 40% N1. And you can see that equals 25% of thrust, while 20% and 1 equal just about 4% of thrust. If we take this further and go all the way up to takeoff thrust, you will see how the relationship between the thrust and the N1 just becomes more and more different. So if we bring the engine up to 50% thrust, something roughly over here, then you can see that at 50% thrust we're looking at about 65% N1. If we bring the engine all the way further, which we're going to do in a few moments during our takeoff run, you will notice that the change becomes even more evident. The advantage of this is that the thrust readout is independent of the aircraft's maintenance status, so you basically always have the same thrust readout independent of how the actual N1 readout looks like. So that combines the best of the two worlds. Now let's go ahead and line up on our runway over here and we are now going to do our takeoff with full toga power at a hot and high airfield, 23 degrees in seven and a half thousand feet and we are going to see what this is going to look like. So let's do the lineup over here. and see what's going to happen. Now, the main change that we're looking for is how is the N1 going to develop compared to the thrust readout that we have down here. And no worries, I will zoom in a little bit so that you can actually see that developing. By the way, what's worth mentioning as well is just to have a quick look at the actual thrust readouts at the top of the engine indications there. Many pilots find it strange that you can achieve more than 100% N1, because it's a percentage. How can you achieve more than 100? That would be more than maximum, right? The CFM, or sorry, the CF6 engine is the prime example for that. Now, the CF6 engine, if you have used it on the A330, for example, easily goes to takeoff thrust settings around 106% N1. Doesn't make much sense, right? Well, let's have a look at how that develops on the A350 now. You can already see our toga thrust equals 100%. Now, let's go ahead and take off. We're going to start by stabilizing the engines at 25% thrust, which you can see equals somewhere around, yeah, 40% N1-ish. Now let's go all the way to toga thrust and look at how N1 develops in relationship to your thrust. You can see how the last 10% in thrust happen in only the last very few percent of N1 change. Alright, brakes released and take off. Well, 
and this already is the conclusion of this video. I do hope you found this one interesting. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments underneath the video as I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think about this new method of indicating your engine thrust. And as always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. For now, let's keep watching this takeoff at very high elevation. V1. Rotate. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. Looking forward to see you all again on the next one.